Hi, good day. I am Maria Leila Loyola and I will discuss all about System Analysis Requirement Modeling. The topics that assigned to me are System Analysis Phase Overview, Requirements Determination, and Requirements Analysis Strategies. The objectives are, first, understand how to create a requirements definition, become familiar with requirements definition, understand when to use each requirements analysis strategy, lastly, understand how requirements determination techniques apply to development of internet. Let's start. System Analysis Phase Overview System Analysis is the part of the system development life cycle in which you determine how a current information system is an organization function. Then, you assess what users would like to see in a new system. Use models and other documentation tools is to visualize and describe the proposed system. As you can see in this picture, it illustrates the parts and highlights the determining system requirements under system analysis. Techniques used in requirements determination have become more structured over time. Let's talk more about requirements determination. The system development process aids an organization in moving from the current system, often called the SE system, to the new system, often called the B system. The purpose of requirements determination is to turn the very high level explanation of the business requirements stated in the system request to a more precise list of requirements that can be used as inputs to the rest of analysis, creating functional, structural, and behavioral models. This expansion of the requirements ultimately leads to the design of the system. Defining a requirement. So what is a requirement? It is a simple statement of what the system must do or what characteristics it must have. The important thing to remember is that a requirement is a statement that will change over the time as project moves from inception to elaboration and to construction. Requirements evolve from the detailed statements of the business capabilities that the system should have detailed statements of what technical way the capabilities will be implemented in the new system. Requirements can be either functional or non-functional in nature. Functional requirement, it relates directly to a process of system has to perform or information it needs to contain. For example, requirements that state a system must have the ability to search for available inventory to report actual budgeted expenses. If you are developing a payroll system, the required business uses might include such functions as generate electronic fund transfer, calculate commission amount, calculate payroll taxes, maintain employee dependent information, and report tax deduction to the IRS. The new system must handle all of these functions. Identifying and describing all these business uses require a substantial amount of time and effort because the list of functions and their relationships can be very complex. While non-functional requirement refers to a behavior properties that the system must have, such as performance usability. For example, the ability to access the system using a web browser. One way to do is to use a framework developed over time, the most widely used today is FERPS, acronym that stands for Functionality, Usability, Reliability, Performance, and Security. First, non-functional category is Usability Requirements. It is operational characteristic related to a user such as the user interface, related work procedures, online help, and documentation. For example, the user interface for a smartphone app should behave similarly to the other apps when responding to such gestures as two finger slides, pinching, and expanding. Additional requirements might include menu format, color schemes, use of the organization's logo, and the multilingual support. The R is for reliability requirements, dependability of a system, how often a system exhibits such as behaviors as service outages and incorrect processing 
and how it detects and recovers from those problems. Performance requirements describe operational characteristics related to measures of workload such as throughput and response time. For example, the client portion of a system might be required to have one half second response time to all button presses and the server might need to support 100 simultaneous client sessions with the same response time. While the rest category for non-functional requirement is security requirements, describe how access to the application will be controlled and how data will be protected during storage and transmission. For example, the application might be password protected, encrypt locally stored data with 1024-bit keys, and use security HTTP for communication among client and server nodes. This image shows a sample requirements definition for an appointment system for a typical doctor's office. Notice it contains both functional and non-functional requirements. The functional requirements include managing appointments, producing schedules, and recording the availability of the individual doctors while the non-functional requirements includes items such as the expected amount of the time that it takes to store a new appointment, the need to support wireless printing, and which types of employees have to access to the different parts of the system. Prioritize requirements. Why prioritize function requested by the user? Resources are always limited and the analyst must always be prepared to justify the scope of the system. Therefore, it is important to know what is absolutely required. Unless the analyst carefully evaluates priorities, system requirements to tend to expand as users make more suggestions. Requirements analysis also help to determine the number composition and ordering of project iterations. Highly priority requirements are often incorporated into early project interactions so analysts and users have ample opportunity to refine those parts of the systems. Determining requirements is for the requirements. Definition is about business test and information technology test. In the early days of computing, there was a perception that the system analyst as experts with computer systems were is the best position to define how a computer system should operate. During requirements determination, you and the other analyst gather information on what the system should do from as many sources as possible. Sources include users, the current system, reports, forms, and procedures. All of the system requirements are carefully documented and made ready for structuring. Process of determining requirements. Gathering system requirements is like conducting any investigations. The characteristics you need to enjoy solving mysteries and puzzles are the same ones you need to be a good system analyst during requirements termination. First is importance. You should ask question everything. Ask question as, are all transactions processed the same way? Or, could anyone be changed something other than standard price? Next is impartially. Your role is to find the best solution to a business problem or opportunity. For example, to find a way to justify the purchase of new hardware or to insist on incorporating what users think they want into the new system requirements. Third is relaxing of constraint. Assume anything is possible and eliminate the invisible. For example, do not accept this statement. We've always done on that way, so we have to continue the practice. Fourth is attention to details. Every fact must fear with the other fact. One element out of the place means then the ultimate system will fail at the same time. Lastly is reframing. Analysis is in part a creative process. You must challenge yourself to look at the organization in new ways. There are three kinds of strategies in determining requirements that helps the system analysis. First is business process automation or the BPA creates a small amount of change. Second is business process improvement, the BPI 
creates a moderate amount of change. The third is business process reengineering or the BPR creates significant change that affects much of the organization. These three strategies enable the analyst to help users create a vision for the new system. They are not sufficient for extracting information about the detailed business requirements that are needed to build it. The Requirements Analysis Strategies The basic process of analysis is divided into three steps. First is understanding the S is system, identifying improvements, and developing requirements for the to be system. It helps the analyst lead users to the analysis steps so that the vision of the system can be developed. Requirements analysis strategies drive the gain of information that is gathered and how it is ultimately analyzed. There are three requirements analysis strategies as I mentioned earlier in the previous slides. I will discuss more about business process automation or the BPA. BPA leaves the basic way the organization operates unchanged and uses computer technology to do some of the work. BPA can make the organization more efficient but has the least impact on the business. Learners in BPA projects spend a significant time understanding the current ASIS system before moving on the improvements and to be system. There are two kinds of BPA. First is the problem analysis. The most straightforward and the probably the most commonly used means asking the users and managers to identify problems with the SE system. For example, provide more space in which to type customer's address, provide a new report that currently does not exist. Second is the root cause analysis. The ideas produced by problem analysis tend to be solutions to a problem. All solutions can make assumptions about the natures of the problem, assumptions that might or might be valid. Users tend to quickly jump to the solutions without fully considering the nature of the problem. Sometimes the solutions are appropriate, but many times they address a symptom of the problem, not the true problem or the root cause itself. The image shows that there are many possible root causes that underlie the high-level causes identified. The key point in root cause analysis is always to challenge the obvious. The Business Process Improvement or the BPI BPI makes moderate changes to the way of organization operates in order to take advantage of a new opportunities. BPI can improve efficiency doing the things right and improve effectiveness doing the right things. There are three kinds of business process improvement. First is the duration analysis. Requires detailed examination of the amount of the time it takes to perform each process in the current as is system. The analysis begins by determining the total amount of time it takes on average to perform a set of business process of a typical input. They then the time each of the individual steps in the business process for a typical input. The time to complete the basic steps are then totaled and compared to the total for the overall process. The second is the active based costing. A similar analysis that examines the cost of each major process or step in business process rather than the time taken. The analyst identified the cost associated with each of the basic function processes, identified the most costly process, and focused their improvement efforts on them. The last is informal benchmarking, refers to studying how other organizations perform a business process in order to learn how organization can do something better. Benchmarking helps the organization by introducing ideas that employees may never have considered but have the potential to add value. The last strategy is the business process for engineering or the BPR. BPR means changing fundamental way of the organization operates, obliterating the current way of doing business. 
and making major changes to take advantage of the new ideas and new technologies. Planners of BPR projects spend little time understanding the as-is because their goal is to focus on new ideas and new ways of doing business. There are three kinds of business process re-engineering. First is the outcome analysis. Focuses on understanding the fundamental outcomes that provide the value of customers. Although these outcomes sound as tough, they should be obvious. They often are not. For example, consider an insurance company. The second is technology analysis. Many major changes in business since the turn of the century have been able by the new technologies. It starts by having the analysts and managers develop a list of important and interesting technologies. Then the group systematically identifies how every technology could be applied to the business process and identifies how the business would benefit. The last is the activity elimination. The analysts and the managers work together to identify how the organization could eliminate each activity in the business process, how the function could operate without it, and what effects are likely to occur. Initially, managers are reluctant to conclude the process can be eliminated. This is a force fit exercise in that they must eliminate each activity. There are three techniques in selecting appropriate strategies. First is potential business value. It is varies with the analysis strategy. Although BPA has the potential to improve the business, most of the benefits from BPA are tactical and small because BPA does not seek to change the business process. It can only improve their efficiency. BPA usually offers moderate potential benefits depending upon the scope of the project because it seeks to change the business in some way. It can increase both efficiency and effectiveness. BPR creates large potential benefits because it seeks to radically improve the nature of the business. Second technique is the project cost that is always important. BPA has the lowest cost because it has the narrowest focus and seeks to make the fewest changes while BPI can be moderately expensive depending upon the scope of the project. BPR is usually expensive because of the amount of the time required of senior managers and the amount of redesign to business processes. The last technique is the breadth of analysis. Refers to the scope of analysis or whether analysis includes business process within a single business function. BPA typically examines a single process, while BPI has a much narrower scope that usually includes one or several business functions, and BPR takes a broad perspective, often spanning several major business processes, even across multiple organizations. That's the end of my report. Once again, this is Maria Leila Loyola. Thank you for listening.